Hello, I'm user minus one, and I'm going to show you some tools I made for Reaper for working with microtonal layouts on the Novation Launchpad Mini. Now, I do have four of these here so I can play in extended layouts, but that's kind of besides the point. So without further ado, let's get started on how this all works. And this all starts from the GitHub repository that I made specifically for this video and for you guys to download and try for yourself. And this has a few different things. We're going to look at some stuff specific to 311 Edo, which we'll talk about later. And the two important folders you need to look at right now is data and scripts. And um, the scripts folder has all of the scripts you'll need for like general microtonal layouts. And then there's two more in here. We'll talk about that later. And then in the data folder, it has the data files that you'll need. So that's that. Now to get this actually set up with Reaper, we need to go to action options, not actions, op options. We need to go to show Reaper resource path and explore finder and that'll pull this up with all of the folders. And in the effects folder, this is where all of your JS effects are stored, which are custom uh, like effect plugins that Reaper can interpret and process audio and MIDI with that you can write yourself with code. So you want to go into the scripts folder um, and you want to select all of these and just drag all of these right into um, right into this folder and what's important is you do have to copy this folder as well because this has an effect inside of it which is just because of the way it was named but again that's besides the point so once you've done that, then your effects should be set up. But because this um, is supposed to work with a bunch of different layouts, I'm doing a system where I'm actually reading data from the user. So that's what this is for. You're gonna wanna make two folders inside this folder in Reaper called data, which is where the JSFX can read information from. And you're gonna wanna put these two folders in there, the isomorphic color maps and the isomorphic scale maps. And this will have all of your stuff that you need to get these layouts set up. Um, so now I'm going to show what that looks like in the DAW. So when you have those, what you want to do is you want to create a few tracks to record all of your MIDI keyboards. Or if you have just one, you can make one track. Although, really, you need two because one of them has to be the control track. Because there's one track that sort of sets parameters globally for all of these. And then there's individual ones that actually change the layout for each individual thing you have. And as a side note, um, the um, control config can also be configured or it, by default it takes input from these buttons to let you change like how the layout is on the fly essentially. So what we're going to do is we're going to record, make sure the record is disabled so that it's just monitoring the input. We're going to record from launchpad one for our control channel and we're going to need some input effects for this. So first we need um, a MIDI sysx clear, which is one of the effects I made. Now, this is because um, in these other tracks, we're going to be receiving MIDI data, but also sending sysx data back to these to configure the layouts. And we want to make sure that's cleared so it doesn't mess anything up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a MIDI launchpad range expand. And what this will do is this will um, take these buttons and make them map to MIDI notes, effectively expanding your range so you have 80 buttons to play with instead of 64. And then we are going to add a MIDI isomorphic control config. Now this is why it was in a folder because when I named this, it interpreted this slash as referring to a subdirectory. So that's why it's like this. But this is going to have all your settings for configuring this. And for starters, we're just going to set this to a nice 12 veto layout and no scale. 
Um, I, I know, pretty sad, but this is just to demonstrate the basics of this. Um, so, once we have that, that's our control channel set up. Now we have to set up these four, which is going to take a hot minute. Um, and we're going to input from launchpad 1 for this one. Um, we don't need that right now. Launchpad 2. Launchpad 3. And finally, launchpad 4. And then on each of these, we're going to have a nearly identical chain. We're going to also include a MIDI sysx and a MIDI launchpad range expand for these. So you can just copy those over into all of those. And then because, because we're sending data back, we want to make sure that it's outputting back to the same instrument that it was on. And finally, in order to prevent the MIDI data from being sent back to these instruments and messing the layout up, we're going to go here and we're going to add a MIDI clear so that it clears all the MIDI data before it sends it back. But this doesn't mean it um, prevents MIDI data from being sent um, from these tracks because you can send the MIDI data pre-FX to a different track, and we're going to be utilizing that. Now, the final ingredient we need to make this work is to add a MIDI isomorphic launchpad tool on all of these input effects. And before we do that, let's just make sure I'm naming these well. This is launchpad 1, launchpad 2, launchpad 3, and launchpad 4 and um, we're going to add ourselves if I can spell isomorphic that's the isomorphic launchpad tool so we're gonna add that and we're going to make sure that's on all of these channels and before we actually get this set up with an instrument we're going to do two more things. One more thing is to go to the input for Launchpad 1, and we're going to actually disable the top row. And that's because we're using these buttons to control the layout on the fly, so we don't want this to also trigger MIDI. Um, and the other thing is we're going to change the rotation for these other keyboards. Now, this is not taking any effect yet because we actually haven't sent the sysx data, but we can do that easily just by pressing space and you'll see that it automatically gets sent. Although you might have to press it multiple times to get it to actually send to all of these. It's, it's just a little buggy like that. Another thing that helps us to set reset flags on a knit to no, so that it doesn't try to um, like clear the layout and then re-render it. Um, so you only really want this to be on when you're loading it up for the very first time. But after that, since the data is already set, um, it shouldn't be a problem. And um, anyway, the final thing we're going to do is... So this one, because it's rotated this way, we want to rotate this clockwise and set our X offset to negative 9 so that it's kind of next to this. And you'll see what I mean when I actually, like, kind of have a layout mapped to this. Um, so this one is rotated full, which is kind of a different way of saying 180 degrees, and that's negative 9, negative 9. And then the final one is going to be rotated counterclockwise, and the Y offset is just going to be negative 9. So now that we've got that all set up, we should be ready to get this working with an instrument. So I'm going to insert a new track. I'm going to just put that there. And now I'm going to receive from all these launchpad tracks. I'm not going to receive from the control track, just the launchpad ones. And because we added MIDI clears to all of these, we want to change this to prefix for all of them. And then finally, to get this working, obviously, make sure you know that's your instrument. And you got to just load an instrument. 
So we are going to load um, a nice instance of Piano Tech, which is a great plugin, but pretty pricey. And we're just going to load up, you know, a vintage read soft. Why not? And without further ado, we should be able to get some great sounding stuff. And nothing happens. So let's investigate why that is. So there's two problems with the layout currently. The first is that the transpose is at zero, meaning this is outputting to MIDI note zero, which means it is outputting notes. But because we're using piano tech, it actually doesn't generate any sound for MIDI notes that low. So we have to transpose this up, up, up. You can see can colors as I transpose. So let's set it to 60, so it's at C, like middle C. And now you can hear it sets it to middle C. But now all of these are at middle C. And the way we change that is we want to change these parameters. The X steps determines how many steps it increases as it goes from left to right. And the Y steps determines how many it increases when it goes from bottom to top. Now, we don't want these to be zero because then we just get the same note. So I'm going to kind of have a sort of bosunquit layout. I don't know how it's pronounced, but the way you do this layout is you make the X steps to be two and the Y steps to be negative one. And you can see the layout changing while I'm changing the parameters. And now all of a sudden you see this is kind of like a piano keyboard, just kind of like warped a little bit. That's where that is. And another great layout is if I change this to five, we get the wiki Haydn layout, which is really nice because you just kind of play from bottom to top. And it's really easy to just noodle in different scales in this layout. So now that we have this loaded up now i can demonstrate these sort of things so these two buttons i configure them to transpose up and down by octaves so and you can see that that automatically transposes it by 12 notes because that's what it's set to in this color map file. And these transposes by semitones. And then these transpose it based on the layout. So you can see the layout is like this, but if I want the root note to be over here without knowing how many steps that is, I could just go one, two, and I'm over here. And if I wanna go, up to, I just go up to, and you can see I've mapped it to the corresponding arrows that are on the launch pad by default. So it makes it really nice for moving to different layouts, especially as you use different tunings where things get weirder. So I don't know about you, but I'm pretty tired of 12 Edo, so I'm going to switch this over to 15. Now, to do this, um, first I'm going to change this to actually be 2-9 because that will look better for the 15 Edo layout. It's kind of confusing here, but you'll see in a minute once I go to 15, it's very interesting. But it's not tuned to 15 Edo yet, so to do that, we go over here and we just load our tuning file, and you can see it's already in my history. And make sure the string tension is off, then choose that keyboard mapping. And now we have those five veto fifths, those tasty ones. And this is what our layout is like. So it's kind of like a pseudo porcupine-ish layout. So 
so you can get really crazy with those extensions. Um, now there's kind of two things more that I want to demonstrate. Um, the first thing is this MIDI channel octave shift thing. Now, one sort of um, thing about using different tunings is, like, say you're using a really low root note for whatever reason, like 30, and then as you go up here, you can't play any of these notes, but they're still within the audible range. So to fix this, we can make it to where the MIDI channel shifts the octave, and now all these notes are unlocked. But as I play this, you'll see that it doesn't actually go up an octave, and that's because we also have to tell our synthesizer that we're using a multi-channel MIDI layout. Now, the only two synthesizers I know of that do this are Pianotech and Surge XT. If you know of any others that do this, please let me know. But now you can hear... We get all those extra notes that we didn't get when we set this to no. So that's another fun thing you can do with that. Let's set this to something less stupid, like 261.6. And then the other thing I want to show is you can actually load a scale map file to change the subset. So now we're using a porcupine subset, and if we change these parameters here, um, it's in the equal porcupine mode, and now these buttons, instead of transposing it, it just it transposes the whole layout, and these buttons transpose by the individual steps, which lets you choose different routes for your scale. If you want, you can always go back to the none scale to turn that off. Um, and then you can set this to something more sensible for a fully chromatic layout. So that, that's basically all of the features of this. Now, before I move on to explaining 3.11 Edo specifically, I kind of want to show you what the file formats for this actually look like which I designed myself, by the way, so I apologize that they're not the best, but they work decently well. So I'm going to go over here into my data, I just work for color maps, and I'm going to show you what this looks like. So the first thing shows you how many steps are in your tuning. And then we have this number 10002, that just tells the program, these are kind of, these sort of divides divide up different sections of the data file. So you need to make sure these are included. So the first thing is we have the number of notes. Then we have a 10002. Then this is the reference pitch that the color map starts at, the reference MIDI note. So this is MIDI note 60, which is a C, and then 10003. And then these are the colors. Now, the launch pad only supports color triples where the range is from 0 to 127 for each color channel. So this is basically the brightest red you can get, the brightest green, the brightest blue, and then these are just darker versions. So this is essentially the color palette of what colors you have in your note map. And then you have a 10004, and then these are the indi indices of what colors you're using. So zero tells us we're using the first color because in programming indices start from zero. So this goes zero to four. So that tells you that the first two, three colors are the zeroth color, the, the, the zero's place color, the two's place color, and the four's place color. And of course I did it like this so that um, different notes within each 5 veto subset are colored differently so you can tell them apart. Um, so, 
say I thought, well, this dark red is too boring. I want to make it white. So what you can do is you can set this just be 127, 127, 127, and then save that. Then when you go back here, you can reload the color map and it'll apply those changes. So now these are white. Now we have the a strip of candy cane fifths. But it's not Christmas time, so that's illegal. So let's change this back to um, 3200. And then when we reload this again, it's great. So basically these these numbers here kind of divide the sections. You have the size of the map, the reference note, the colors you're using, and then like what note maps to what color. So like this would be starting from MIDI note 60, then you go up. And then you only need to provide 15 colors because then after that it just repeats because we're assuming like repeating scales. So that's the format for the color maps. Now for the scale maps, it's a little bit more involved. So this first one, this literally just tells you if you're enabling the scale or not. So one means yes and zero means no. So that's why for this scale, it just has the number zero, which means we're not doing any scale at all. So if you're doing your own scale, you always start it with a one and then you do a one zero 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 six and then the 7, that tells you the size of your scale map. And then 1007, and then you provide your scale. So this is Porcupine 7. And you have to provide the starting note and the ending note. Because, like, if you put something weird, like 14, then it would, like, it would have it repeat at that interval instead of at, um, uh instead of at, um, like, whatever the octave is. And then there's another section, which is a note remap, which basically allows you to take any of the pitches, like, and it lets you have another map of pitches, and you can also remap it to different channels. So because we're not interested in doing that, we just want the size of it to be one, and we're just saying... The first one is just at the same pitch, or it's just, like starting from pitch zero, we're just at pitch zero, and then we're going to the zeroth MIDI channel, which is MIDI channel one, and then we're repeating everything at one. So if you don't want to do any MIDI mapping um, shenanigans, which I'm assuming most people will want, then you just want to put a one here and then zero zero one. And if you ever get confused, you can always just try copying one of these text files like say copy it and then kind of modify it from there and then after one zero zero one zero the final thing um this is where you can let it output to different blocks um and i'll explain more of what that means when i explain what um when i explain the 311 edo section because part of this was specifically designed for that so that's the file format for these things. Um, um, and also just to sort of demonstrate this, you can do the same thing where you load the scale. And if I set this to one seven, you can see now it doesn't repeat at the octave. If I modify it from within here and then reload my scale map, then it reloads it for me. So now we're back in octave repeating land and everything is fine and dandy. So, um, so that's where that is at. And next I'm going to explain the process for doing this with 311 Edo, which requires some more specialized tools.
Um, so what you're going to want to do is make sure you go back to the GitHub repository. Make sure to download these specific tools and there's some great things in here. So these two are plugins that you put in your effects folder, which is right here. And then um, 311 Edo Poly, you're going to put that in the um, in the color maps folder. And then 311 Edo Full, you're going to put that in the scale maps folder. And this is going to be a bit involved, so stay with me here. We're going to go in here and we're actually going to change the MIDI note color map, which I'll explain shortly. We're going to change this to the color map that I've also provided for you in here, uh, MIDI note color map.png. And then we're going to change a few visual elements of the actual MIDI editor itself, which you can do by going to actions and typing theme dev and then show theme tweak configuration window. You're going to want to make sure to go to MIDI and make sure that the background color is the same for naturals and sharps and flats. I just chose 40, 40, 40. For out of bounds, I chose 30, 30, 30. And for the selected pitch, I chose 38, 38, 38. And I made them the same across here. And then I also made the octave line color also 40, 40, 40 for a reason I'll explain shortly. And with all that out of the way, let me finally explain um, this monster of a web page. Essentially, I designed a polychromatic notation for 311 Edo based on what artists like Dolores Cathrino have done in the past. So for this, I'm using 11 colors. They are coral, red, orange, yellow, lime, green, aqua, sky, blue, purple, and pink. And you'll see that um, those are the exact colors that are here at the end in this MIDI note color map. So if you're clever, you might see where I'm going with this. And essentially, um, each of these modify the interval by three steps of 311 Edo, and then pluses and minuses modify by one step within that. So you can see all of these colors, they kind of overlap like this. And to help with the composition process, if you ever want to try composing with this, I also made a chart of what N harmonics look like. So if I'm if I'm at a pitch and then I go up by a Pythagorean comma, then that will be equivalent to going up and then going to this color. So a pitch, uh, like a pitch that's um, the color green is N harmonic to that pitch of Pythagorean comma up. That's the color yellow and has a minus in front of it. So that's all of that. And then it's the same for the diatonic and chromatic semitone. Um, so that's all of that. Now to actually work with this, like actually work with this, um, first thing is we're going to make a MIDI guide track. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to insert a new MIDI item. And you'll notice my MIDI editor looks pretty funky because you can barely see or you can't really see the vertical lines at all. But that's partially by design. And what we're going to do is we're essentially designing um, the layout for this. So if I go to, I'm going to go to channel 12. This just gives me a sort of generic shade of gray to work with, um, which if selected blends in with the background. But essentially, um, This might be just a little bit difficult because of how it blends in, but it's totally worth it. So what we're doing is we're kind of making an expanded chromatic layout where um, where like three notes, we're having a group of three notes that maps to sort of like one pitch class. And we're doing that because the one in the center is natural, and if you go up or down, then those that that alters by one step of three eleven edo. So, 
so we're gonna have C D E. Well, actually, for C, we're actually going to have a slightly darker color. So we're gonna go to channel 13. And we're gonna put that in there. And the reason for that is because now when we go to these notes, the F is gonna look slightly different. Um, so that you can tell them apart and then we're gonna have G and A like that actually like that and then we're gonna have B as well obviously which is gonna be up here and then the whole thing's going to repeat. Now we're going to put in our um, black notes, so we actually have to move these up. So for the black notes, I'm just doing um, this dark color, actually channel 15, so that it's not too dark. So we have C sharp here. Then we have that here as well. Well, actually, these are D flat, E flat, G flat, A flat, and B flat because and harmonics don't work the same way in um, 311 Edo. So now that we've got all of this, you can basically copy the whole thing and then move it up one octave and move that up one octave and then also have another line of C's at the top and now we have basically a nice background so that if we were to insert another MIDI item here and click the I you would see that background highlight these things up. So now you might have guessed this before, but basically what we're doing is we're letting the MIDI channel literally directly describe what color of pitch we're working with. So to actually set this up, I need to have four instances of an instrument. So I'm going to make this instrument one. I want to remove all my sends, delete those, um, duplicate that, um, and this is going to be instrument two, instrument three, instrument four, and actually this is going to be instrument A, B, C, and D, and I'll explain why in a second. So here we want to load all the exact same instruments. So you have to do this with a synth that supports the um, MIDI channel octave shift like we were talking about earlier. So that's only Piano Tech or Surge. So this time I'm going to use Surge and I'm just going to use a nice, um, this nice church organ. <laughs> So that's pretty nice and what we're going to do is we're going to have this loaded up on all four of these channels like so and we're going to load them up with different subsets of 311 so in tune um, this is why you need to download um, these scale and KBM files because um, in instrument A we're going to load a scale tuning we're going to load 311 poly A and then you can also 
drag this over if you want and then 311polya.kbm And you can see that they're the same because, or that they correspond to each other because the Hertz number matches. And now, if you've caught on, you might guess that for um, for instrument B, we load poly B, um, which is, um, you have to load the scale file first for this to work, poly B and poly B and those match up now now here we're going to continue the pattern we're going to load poly C and poly C and those match and then in here we're going to um, load poly D and poly D. So that sets up our instruments. Now we need to get the MIDI set up. So I'm going to set up my um, keyboard here, which shouldn't be too difficult. All I have to do is um, change my X steps to 18, my Y steps to 0, and my Tron's position is going to be at zero, probably. And then I'm going to load 311 poly. That, sh that should be one. Y step should be one. And then I'm going to load uh, 311 Edo full. And then I'm going to set my global X offset to negative nine and my global Y offset to negative eight. No, I was wrong. I have to set this to nine and set this to eight. And then you can see we have 311 Edo polychromatic using the exact same notation. So we have green, aqua, sky, blue, purple, pink. We also have coral, red, orange. We have all of the colors, and this maps one full octave. And now what we have to do is we have to do some other funky stuff. So in here, we're going to be loading some new effects. This is going to be transfer 1, transfer 2, and transfer three and this is gonna receive from all of these tracks and it's going to be pre-fx obviously and then um, to make this easier I'm just going to delete these two and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna duplicate this twice And then I'm going to um, check that. Now to explain this next little thing, I'm going to quickly go back to my Reaper resource path. And if we look at the scale maps and look at 311 Edo full, you can see it has a bunch of stuff. But at the end here, this is what the blocks are for. It's going to basically, like, after we're outputting to different channels, it's also going to output it to different groups that will be interpreted by this next plugin that I'm going to load here, um, which is um, the MIDI input block filter. And you can see we have four to choose from, and it's going to choose one of them at a time. So in trance one, you have to. Um, You have to input um, 
Let me see if I can remember this. I think in trance one, you have to input block two. In trance three, you have to input block three. No, one input two, two input three, three input four. Now this is a little bit confusing. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to create our MIDI tracks. So this is gonna be um, MIDI input one, MIDI input two, and MIDI input three. And this is going to receive from transfer one. This is gonna receive from transfer two. And this is gonna receive from transfer three. And I'm also gonna arm these for recording. Um, we're gonna record the MIDI output, no input. And as you'll see, if we record this, let me just make sure it's not um, going to record a voice line for my voice. If we record this and I put some notes here and we stop that and we go here, you can see on channel one, it's actually put the notes that we played there. And it's, and if we look at the, guide track um, which is conveniently over there you can see that lines up with the note C and to make this guide track more useful you probably want to set the playback rate to 0 0.001 and then extend this way out across your whole track and then when you go here you can see that underlay um, and this is what the different blocks is for because each of these um, can uh, have data for three octaves of 311 needle for a total range of nine octaves so if I just record something real quick this is octave one octave two octave three octave four, octave five, octave six, octave seven, octave eight, and octave nine. And now you can see if I open these, you can see all of them with all of that fun MIDI data that I outputted from my skillful fingers. <clears throat> But you're probably wondering, how do we actually hook this up to the instrument? That's a fantastic question. We do this with a MIDI matrixer, and that's what the other plugin is for. We're going to call this MIDI matrix, um, and we're going to have 12 tracks in here. So duplicate this, um, duplicate those. Duplicate those, duplicate, duplicate those. We're gonna name this 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D. There's a good reason for this. 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D, 3A, 3B, 3C, 3D. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, go in here and we're going to add our polychromatic MIDI matrixer. And now you can see that we have the inputs 1 to 3 and the outputs A through D. And these correspond exactly to our MIDI inputs and outputs we have here. So 1A is correct. Now we're going to copy this over here, but this is going to be 1B. 1C, 1D, 
two-way um, two B two C two D three A three B three C and 3D. And now what we're going to do is um, MIDI input 1 is going to send to all of the MIDI matrix tracks with a 1 in them. So 1A, 1B, 1C, and 1D. MIDI input 2 is going to send to all of the ones with a 2. So 2A, 2B, 2C, and 2D. And MIDI input 3 is going to send to all the ones with a 3. So that's 3A, 3B, 3C, and 3D. And um, now we're going to go to our instruments. We're going to receive from all the ones that say A on instrument A. So that's 1A, 2A, 3A. This one is going to receive from all the ones that say B. So 1B, 2B, 3B. This one is going to receive from all the ones that say C. So 1C, 2C, 3C. And this one is going to receive from all the ones that say D. So 1D. 2D and 3D. Now we should be almost ready, but before we do anything, I'm going to set the transpose back to zero, zero, and then I'm going to go to my instruments and make sure that use MIDI channel for octave shift is enabled on all of them. And now when I play this, hopefully we should hear something. So that's a good sign. Let's go up a few octaves. octaves, 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 octaves. That's not a good sign. That means that I probably made a tiny mistake somewhere. I'm not sure what. Um, um, well, this is awkward. So one way to troubleshoot this is just make sure that 1A is 1A, 1B is 1B. 1C is 1C, 1D is 1D, 2A is 2A, 2B is 2B, 2C is 2C, 2D is 2D, 3A is 3A, 3B is 3B, 3C is 3C, 3D is 3D. Make sure this is going from 1 to A, 1 to B. 1 to C, 1 to D, 2 to A, um, 2 to B, 2 to C, 2 to D, 3 to A, 3 to B, 3 to C, 3 to D. One thing that might help us to apply the tuning at MIDI input instead of after modulation. That might help to make things work correctly.
And yes, that has fixed the issue. It was just an issue with Surge's internal transmission. <laughs> a little glitch on my part um i believe i accidentally pressed one of these transposition buttons which you don't want to do when you're working um in this layout so it's good to disable the record on that so that these don't do anything and now for your viewing pleasure i will try to play a whole glissando on this and fi my final trick for today will be to show actually um recording with this. see that if I look over here everything has been recorded exactly as I said it So that's um, how you can do basic layouts or go all the way to 311 Edo in the door. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I wasn't too rambly. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'll try to answer them, but I might not get back to you super soon because um, I'm trying to compose and stuff. But that's what I have for you. Um, I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye bye